What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Time from Wisdom of the Ages, Dr. Wayne Dyer. We're going to take a look at time. It's a little essay Dr. Wayne Dyer wrote based on a poem that John Milton wrote. He describes John Milton. Uh, he says, John Milton's poetry and prose have helped make him one of the best known and most respected figures of English literature. On time is what this poem's called. Man, it's windy out here. I hope it's nice where you are, ladies and gentlemen. Hope everybody's having a good day, feeling well, got your tea. I just figured I'd come on and continue reading this for whoever needs it. How may I serve? That's the key thing we got to think. Oh, yeah. I wanted to give a shout out to um, A1, whoever you are. I really appreciate you taking the time to leave a comment on my previous video. He goes, yo, Chase, I'm here. I showed up and you're right. It's like, how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> one bite at a time. I was saying yesterday about 1%, just take one step showing up. See, this is what I'm trying to do right now, 1%. And I was learning, I think it was today or yesterday, about how to rewire your brain or get your subconscious, um, you know, automatic actions to work better is it's like when you think of doing something simple, like the example that was given was, I'm getting off track here, but this is what I like to do. So hopefully you like it. The example I'm given here is he said he set up a thing like every hour is a timer to where when the timer would go off, he would tell himself to do something like whether it's one, you know two push-ups or some simple. And if you do that process to where you tell yourself to do it and then do do it and do it over time, over I think the science is like it takes sixty six days to rewire and create a new automatic pathway of action but he said 100 days just do this kind of thing to where you reset yourself to where you do the commands that you give yourself instead of so often what we do in life is oh i want to do that i'll do it 40 minutes from now and then 90 percent of the things we end up not doing but is that going back to that one percent uh back to the comment here he goes how do we walk around the world one step at a time just throw it out there. What comes back, comes back. I really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Most negative comments are bot accounts or paid trollers. <laughs> Hopefully. All right. Let's get to time, ladies and gentlemen. Close out of that page. Ding. All righty. This is a great book. Internationally best-selling author Dr. Wayne Dyer has crafted powerful collections of writings, poems, and sayings from some of the greatest thinkers of the past 25 centuries. And then he writes some essential essays of his ideas about this kind of thing, and I like to elaborate on it. So, Time on Time by John Milton. Fly, envious time, till thou run out thy race. Call on the lazy, leaden, stepping hours, whose speed is but the heavy plummet's pace, and glut thyself with what thy womb devours, and is no more than what is false and vain. And merely mortal dross, so little is our loss, so little is thy gain. For when as each thing bad thou hast entombed, and last of all thy greedy self consumed, then long eternity shall greet our bliss with an individual kiss and joy shall overtake us as a flood when everything that is sincerely good and perfectly divine with truth and peace and love shall ever shine about the supreme throne of him to whose happy making sight alone when once our heavenly guided soul shall climb, then all this earthly grossness quit, attired with the stars 
we shall forever sit, triumphing over death and chance and thee, O time. Mmm. Knocks it out of the park. What do you think? An A, a B? <laughs> Super good. John Milton. And so Wayne Dyer says here, in putting this book together, I have had the opportunity to read thousands, thousands of poems written by hundreds of great thinkers throughout history. The theme of time as an enemy is quite popular with those who record the human drama, particularly among the poets. And just think about it for yourself how much time controls life and makes it a struggle. And, you know, like the idea of you've got to be on time, you got to set deadlines, we want things to happen when we want them to happen. And, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. That's just where my mind was going there. John Milton is considered one of the greatest of those poets and many who lived long after Milton have referred to his 17th century literary genius this particular one, and author of Paradise Lost as the most influential poet in their lives. The human dilemma in regard to time is understandably an ongoing theme or topic because we blame the passage of time for weakening and destroying our bodies. Mm. And the, one of the most fascinating things I've heard is how our thought paradigms collectively create our reality. And he's like, so what if that everybody agreed that we didn't have to die? <laughs> now, you know, people would say, well, the physical process happens and whatever. But what if we didn't expect it? How would that change? I don't know. Would we live haphazardlessly? And it's just a fascinating thought. The basic truth of our fleshly human reality can be summed up to one sentence. In the end, we will all grow older and die. This applies whether you are a 17th century blind poet, blind poet, a famous actress today, a person of enormous power, or a housewife in Athens. <laughs> like it or not, this is our reality. John Milton recognized this fundam fundamental truth as he wrote his poem on time. However, he was also striving to go beyond the seemingly superior power of time. And see, to me, that's where my mind takes me to the part of us that isn't our physical existence, the part of us that's like not the body, the part that you were when you were five, that you still continue you know, to it's like when you, you used to be able to run and jump and do wild things, it's not like the mind that you are isn't that person. It's just that the body is different. There was a letter from a president, I forget who, forget who uh, wrote it, but it was, it was like, my house is old and decrepit and falling apart, but I am fine. <laughs> that was a funny way of looking at it. Hmm. Passage of time. Enter eternity and warm reception. Please for soul, the eternal friend of the poet, and also our key to bliss, grace and salvation. That was a quality sentence. That's Wayne Dyer put some sentences together. Don't you love that? Sometimes I'll be writing. Man, there's weird, there's weird lights going on. That's why. That's why. Unless it is orbs. <laughs> but anyways. Hmm. Go beyond the power of time. He describes time as going about the business of glutting itself with what thy womb devours. But poetically explains that everything that it gets to eat is false vain and nothing but mortal dross, so little is our loss. We humans, so little is thy gain, times. Ah. So time's not really winning. See, it goes back just to the way we think about it. He describes eternity greeting us with a kiss and the joy of escaping the clutches of time. Eternity takes over and introduces us to the timelessness of truth, peace, and love. 
Milton says it beautifully in his conclusion, attired with stars, we shall forever sit, triumphing over death and chance to the O time. For some reason that makes me think of Egyptian, you know, like trying to go back to the stars. And then it makes me think of like astro theological stuff, how like the gods are the planets and all that kind of stuff. The stars, going back to the stars. <laughs> Describes, yes. Let's skip forward here to a bit. Wayne Dyer goes, contemplate your physical self and all its possessions and practice laughing peacefully at it all. <laughs> Time has only leased them to you. As you read the poetry of the greats who preceded you here, this theme will crop up repeatedly. The battle is often perceived. That light thing is so weird. The battle is often perceived as being between death and life, chance and choice. And yes, time and eternity Sorry, that was just, it boggled me there. And yes, time and eternity, yet you are here now and you can stop perceiving it as a battleground. Instead, make peace with time, laugh at its work, and know your laughter does not make you a victim. Observe from your eternal perspective that the observer is immune to time. See, that's what I was kind of getting at there. The eternal part of us, it's like the observer or the witness that's like continual throughout the process as everything else goes through its process in the natural world of creation and destruction and renewal and you know this process there's a bag over here blowing in the wind outside and it's shining flickering i wonder if that's I wonder if that's what's going on unless you don't see that it might just be on my end Hopefully. <laughs> Feel what Milton is conveying to us through his sightless aging body many centuries ago. A sense of triumph, a sense of knowing that soul is where our bliss resides. Attire with stars we shall forever sit. Forever includes now, is what he says. Live the truth that resonates with you regardless of how you have been conditioned or what good opinions of others might be. Become independent of the good opinion of other people. Become detached from the outcome. And what's the third one? Have no investment in power over others. Those are the steps, I think, to self-actualization. They're much easier said than done in practice. So the wisdom of the ages, which is another great thing about this book. I'll leave it linked down below if you'd like to get it. Or you can just come back every now and then and join me. Yeah, I kind of like to do this uh, teaching and commentary purposes. But for future, like, reference for, you know, loved ones, family members, grandkids, who knows? I mean, hopefully all this stuff is still around back when you're by then. <laughs> Be in the freaking virtual world. Whew. Peace. Come back. We can choose peace. And so this is what Wayne Dyer gives to us at the end of the chapter as recommendations. Decide always to choose what brings you and others a sense of both inner and outer peace. And when I'm feeling the turmoil and the intensity of like wanting people to feel better or wanting to have interacted in a better way to have created more happiness and peace for others. See, it's a weird paradox. I don't feel peaceful in that and so I have to remember to remind myself to choose which brings you and others both sense of inner and outer peace. 
and then love, be a force of love as often as you can and subdue thoughts of hatred, judgment, and anger, anger whenever you feel them surface. I heard a great analogy earlier today. It's like whack-a-mole. Whenever they come up, these, you know, the opposite of love, uh, good examples was what he put here, hatred, judgment, anger, a separateness. When you feel them surface, you got to knock them. And like back to that rewiring thing, if you can do it over and over and over repetitively, eventually it will become automatic. Hopefully, the science seems to point that direction. The timelessness of truth, peace, and love give you the tools for looking time right in the eye and saying with conviction, I have no fear of you, for I am eternal, and you can't touch me. <laughs> quality. That's a quality one. Yeah, I really hope to go all the way through this and provide you know, my own insights and hope to, like I said earlier, help anybody who needs it. Some, you know, I wrote down one time, it's like uh, music from my perspective. And it was the idea of the philosophy that everybody listens to music and hears the same song, but gets something totally different. And if you don't get what I mean, then like, a simpler example would be two people will look at a painting and have an individual experience, the, the, you know, their own way that they thought about it. And so I think that's why commentary is great, like these kind of things is, you know, it's sometimes you don't hear it the same way that somebody else hears it. And when they say how they were hearing it, you're like, wow, that's different. And that kind of, then you can alchemize it and amalgamate and hopefully reach the hidden wisdom of the ages and seek to make happiness the way. See, I used to say all the time, seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment. <laughs> but I've really learned that the seeking after happiness is almost not making it the way not bringing it to the present moment i got that somewhere in this huge pile of notes over here that we'll eventually get to in the future but for now if you got value consider subscribing hit the like button leave me a comment and let me know what you thought or what you think i should share or anything that you think but until the next video ladies and gentlemen ah. <laughs> until the next video take control and start to notice the negative thoughts the thoughts that pop up and start to hit them back down and just one percent i'm going to stick to that one percent show up for yourself in your mind that's a good way to think of it all right love everybody wish you well be back in the future